Hello, friends. Welcome to Theater Arlington's Theater Thursdays. Uh, we are thrilled to have you here with us once again. Always a pleasure to see everybody and to get to chat with you and talk to you about all the things that are happening at Theater Arlington and in our surrounding areas lately. So uh, welcome. As always, please right now like and share uh, this post so that more people will see it because uh, we want as many people to know about what we're doing as possible. Um, be sure and say hello. Hi, Cindy. See, Cindy's already said hello. She knows the routine here. So y'all say hi in the comments, ask questions in the comments, talk to us in the comments, because uh, that makes things more fun for everybody. Uh, hello, Kathy O'Neill. Good to see you. Uh, so y'all be sure and chat with us there. Uh, real quickly, uh, let me tell you, we've got a few spaces left in our musical theater performance camp uh, that is coming up. That's coming up pretty quick, June 14th through June 25th. That's two weeks. And you can get rid of your children all day long from nine to five. So um, if you're wanting a place for them to go, this is the place. And they're gonna be working on the show, Fame Junior. Remember my name, Fame. Uh, so that'll be fun for them. Uh, Go to our website for more information about that if you are interested in signing your kids up for that. And there's a website going there at the bottom, theaterarlington.org. Um, also, we have all of our spaces. I know some of you know we're doing uh, Annie Kids. Uh, those are completely filled up with a waiting list of, I don't know, 15 or 20 kids. So uh, if you waited for that one, you're too late. It is filled up. I think there might be one space left available for Shrek Jr. Um, so if you're interested in that camp, which is later on this summer, uh, be sure to go to the website and get signed up really fast. Uh, we do have several spaces left currently in Adventures in Theater, uh, which runs July 12th through the 23rd, another two week camp. And that one is really fun because it covers all different aspects of theater, not just performing. And so if you have kids that are not necessarily performers, but have an interest in the backstage things, they can go and learn all about adventures in theater. So uh, again, those things are filling up pretty fast, our few spots that we have left. So please get to our website and get signed up if you want your kiddos to go and see those. Oh, I just got a notice there, uh, Shrek is already full. So uh, in the minute that uh, I announced that, uh, it's filled up. Um, so hi, Rebecca, Ricky, good to see you. Hi, Kim. Um, yeah, summer camps are going to rock and they're going well and they're going to be lots and lots of fun. Uh, speaking of fun, today we are going to be talking with one of my favorite theaters over in Fort Worth. Uh, and I'm really excited about that uh, because it is a, a great place and they've got some exciting things happening as well. Um, so we're going to be talking to Tim Long, who is the executive producer at Circle Theater. Da -da -da -da. So welcome, Tim. Hello, Mr. Morris. Good to see you. You too. Uh, I'm very happy to have you here. Um, I was telling my folks here on staff uh, that this is, I'm going to do a plug for myself really quick and about Circle Theater mm -hmm. uh, because I directed something there, a melodrama, like in their third or fourth season when they were still at Blue Bonnet Circle. Um, and then I was in a show and that's where I first met you in 1999 um, and did a show for two summers, uh, 99 and then 2000. Um, and so it's been uh, a little over 20 years since I've done every, anything there. And I like, I love the place and, uh, I try to do something there, it seems like every 15 to 20 years. So <laughs> so I need you to find a, uh, 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 either something for me to direct or be in, uh, in your upcoming season. <laughs> Done. Done. We'll just, right, we'll just do the Stephen, Mo we'll do the Steve Morris season. Okay, perfect. All right. Yeah. yeah. Cause I won't be busy over here at all. So that'll. <laughs> yeah. You've got fully free time. <laughs> great. It's um, great. Right. Well, I mentioned um, the Blue Bonnet Circle. Uh, and so tell us uh, a little history on Circle Theater for some of our folks who might not know how it uh, got started and uh, where, where you guys have been and where you are now in terms of location. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we well, Circle Theater was started in 1981, so we're celebrating the 40th anniversary. What a weird year to celebrate a 40th anniversary. Uh, it was founded by a couple, uh, Bill Newberry and Rose Pearson, uh, and they took the theater. They started on, they had a, a couple of shows. They did it, Kell Street Cafe, and then they did a couple of different plays, and they decided they really wanted to do it full time. And then they found a spot on Blue Bonnet Circle, right off of, uh, real close to TCU, real close to the TCU campus. And we're there for about seven years at the Blue Bonnet Circle. And then uh, the city was very helpful and wanted them to move to Magnolia Avenue. So they moved to Magnolia Avenue. And this is why I call Bill and Rose the ultimate hipsters, because they were on Magnolia Avenue before it was cool. There you go. Yeah. I got I to gotta show you a little, uh, a little oh. photo of you with them. Yes. That, yeah. yeah, they were they were so instrumental in Fort Worth theater uh, and really making uh, headway and making things happen over there. And uh, Bill, the sweetest guy, you know, and Rose so formidable and really you know made things happen. She was amazing. They, they were a, a powerhouse of people, and and just this theater. I mean, you know, it's 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 incredible when you start to think about like it's forty years old. That's a lot of theater. Number one, and then number two, to be able to just to sustain it, you know, because they moved. They were to Magnolia for about seven years, and then uh, the Sundance came calling, and we've been in Sundance Square ever since. Right. And so, yeah, it's uh, I miss them dearly. Bill and Rose passed uh, respectively a couple of years ago. So right. it's, yeah, it's, so, it's uh, a strange yeah. feeling too. I know they've got to be very proud of you, though, and what you are doing to carry on their legacy and keep that theater going. So I know that's that too much to live up to. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's hard because you do you, you do think of it. And you consider it, you're like, oh, man, what would Rose and Bill think of this or what would they do that? You know, it's, it's hard because I, I, I try not to I try not to think about that. But it's particularly when we were first coming back uh, from quarantine and sort of I was in the office with myself, I was like, I just feel like they're going to be here <laughs> while I'm going, why aren't you doing a show? What's going on? <laughs> and, and, I, and I certainly feel, I say this, and I say this with all sincerity in my heart. If they were to walk into the theater, like you know, I always hear Bill come into the back door and I could hear his keys jingling. If they were to come into the theater, it would take me about 10 to 15 minutes before I'd be like, hey, what's wait, this is not right. I'd be like, "Hey, where you been?" Like, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so it's it's that kind of thing where it's uh, it's respectful and it's awesome and it's it's just a great thing to keep going on and it, it'll be going on for forty more years. So that's right. That's right. Well, they're very missed, but we're really pleased that yes, that you are keeping things going and that you guys will be there for another forty years. Yeah. Uh, Kathy O'Neill says in the comments here that she is the president of the Tim Long Fan Club. <laughs> Well, I'm the president of the Kathy O'Neill fan club. So, uh, yes. Uh, Lauren Garza says hello to you. And David Coffey is saying hi to us. Hi, David Coffey. Uh, one of my favorite actors in the entire world, not just in this Metroplex. I just think he's brilliant. Um, We're uh, blessed with the amount of talent that's in the, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. It, it, it's I, kind of mind numbing when you think about how many like wonderful actors are here and how many wonderful, it's not just the wonderful theaters. It's just the, it's mind boggling when you start thinking of like Theater Arlington Circle, Stage West, Amphibian, Casa, Dallas Theater Center. It's just, it goes on and on. And we're, we, you know, I know it, it, it makes me realize also it's like, yeah, we are at a big, met the Metroplex is booming, but uh, the theater community is booming along with it. Yes, it is. I would, when I when I would go to New York, that was one of the things when I first started seeing shows there. Um, I mean, I was it was so impressive and I loved it. But I was really I always like, you know, our, our talent of our designers and our directors and certainly our performers. I was like, if we took them to New York and we had those budgets would be just the same. You know, you would never be able to tell a difference between uh, the performers and the, the talent that we have. Uh, it's just they've got tons and tons of money to make them look really great, um, you know, and we're uh, collecting it's money to do that. <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing. Same thing with like you know. I remember when I when I went to New York for the first couple of times for call, saw a couple of shows. I, I was like walking into the theater, and it was it's majestic. Sure, it's nice. Oh, yeah. I was like. This isn't as cool as the Bass Hall. <laughs> it's like, oh, you know, yeah. you get you, you grow up going to the Bass Hall and then you go to these theaters and you're like, well, like, this is it. This is nice, but like, 
have you seen the Bass Hall? And it's yeah, that sounds very grand. Yeah, you know, and it's it's that kind of that was the experience for me. And seeing and, and like you said, seeing shows, it was like, well, it's good, but I've seen good before. I was expecting it to be, you know, like I, I always come back to all my baseball references because I adore baseball and love baseball. But you know, I always felt like, oh, you know, maybe we're double A or triple A, and you know, New York is like the major leagues. And yeah. then you get there, and you're like, oh no, no, this is the major leagues. I mean, there's double A and triple A here too, but there's a lot of major leagues here. And it, yeah. and it made me go like, okay, great. We're, we're not missing out. And it never really felt like I'm missing out more than just the opportunity to be where the collective is. Yeah, agreed, agreed, definitely. Hey, so what's coming up uh, for Circle uh, at, towards the end of the year? I know you got a big project, which we'll talk about here in a minute, that's gonna happen really soon. Uh, but what what's going to happen show wise for the for the rest of your year? Well, the plan right now, we're going to come back. We're going to do a show we were supposed to do in 2020 called The Last Wide Open, which is a little sweet show. And we're planning right now to open that in September. And then uh, uh, and then we're going to follow that with a show. And then we're going to start our new season in 2022. But I keep seeing 2021. So I'm confusing yeah. myself. I said it. I said 2022. Yeah, you said it right. I said it right because I keep saying we're going to start a new season in 2021. I'm like, well, yeah, we're doing that. So that's that's the plans coming back in September. Of course, you know, uh, it's this year. I feel like what's that's the plans for today. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Ask me how the plans are tomorrow and I'll give you a different answer. But yeah, we're certainly the plan right now is we're coming back with the last wide open and try to sort of close out our 2020 season um, and do a little bit and then start real fresh again in January with a couple of things sprinkled out through the year. Great. And then they can go uh, to you, to your website and yes. find out all the information about shows and what's coming up and when you guys announce everything and all that. So. Yeah. We're holding off on announcing for it just because of all the logistics of it. Oh, I um, know. You know, it's one of those things. What I, what I really have been trying not to do is just announce and then be like, and then we're going to move it and then we're going to do it again. And it's happened where it's like, well, we're going to do it this show. You know, I just keep, and I, I keep saying at some point, if we have to do a show in my basement or not my basement, but in my garage, <laughs> we'll do a show in my garage. So everyone's going to be invited to my garage. My kids will be the ushers. They've all agreed to it. And yeah, uh, well, speaking just, of your kids, let's yeah. take a look at them. Oh my gosh. Yeah. They are the cutest things ever. They, they certainly are. Oh, uh, my daughter Violet sitting on my lap, my daughter Holly, and then my son Lucas. Yes, and uh, I understand that they you have a term of endearment for them. Uh, the hooligans? Yes. They <laughs> are the hooligans. It's had, you, had you not mentioned them earlier, I was going to show that picture and say, <laughs> now, who are these hooligans in this photo with you? <laughs> I, I would have been like, They're, those are my kids, because they yeah. are the hooligans. <laughs> yeah. Um, they, all right, and now coming up pretty quick, yes. you guys have a really exciting thing uh, that is very near and dear to my heart. Actually, I had some of my former students uh, that competed and uh, had their play produced for you years ago, um, which is the High School Playwriting Project. Yes. Uh, so tell us exactly, for those folks that are, wouldn't be familiar, what is the High School Playwriting Project? The High School Playwriting Project started in 1996. Again, it's an old thing, just like me. Uh, and it is an opportunity for high school students to submit a 10-minute script to the theater. We take all those 10-minute scripts, and they are read by professional actors and professional theater people or pro participants. What do you call theater technicians, all the theater terms. Uh, and then they are the final 10 are then handed to Connie Whit Lambert, and she selects the four finalists and the four semifinalists. And then this year on June 6th, uh, because we just didn't know if we were going to be able to do a reading or not, we decided to have a reading where we're going to do it outside. So when you're coming out from the basement, yeah. So it's going to be a new world for us because we're going to be outdoors. We're going to be on the campus of Texas Wesleyan University. Um, I've never produced a show outdoors before, so this is going to be fun. I'm used to a basement space. so. Uh, but it's going to be on June 6th on a Sunday. It starts at 5 o'clock. It's kind of a picnic-type event. So come bring your blanket. We're going to read the four top finalist plays. They are fantastic. They are a lot of fun. Uh, and then we'll have some trophies and those the certificates and awards. It's a, it's a really nice little uh, good evening. It's a lot of fun. It's always fun to see what the high school students are, are discussing and interested in. And and they're really talented. Yeah, because they can be brilliant. I mean, there, some of some of their things and their ideas and their thoughts are amazing. It's um, is, this a, is this a free event? This is a free event, no charge. 
Well, Unless you want to pay. If you want to pay a million dollars to come see it, we will take your money. <laughs> You'll always take that. Um, yes. Well, I did find, I found this that tells uh, yeah, who yeah. the folks are. Yes. Um, it's kind of cool. And so uh, I, I might mispronounce their names, but uh, Aiden Brock wrote The Reunion, mm -hmm. Lauren Brown, uh, Bud, Caleb Jackson with you. And then in, it looks like uh, three it, folks. Yes. Uh, just Luke me. Englehart, Katie Spragans, and... Uh, Noah Sorrell wrote the script, uh, Suspicious Lemons. Uh, that one right there just got a great title. I'm excited about that. Um, Indeed. It's, it's got awesome. some semi-finalists there as well. And so those uh, top four, uh, those plays will all be read aloud by professional actors, correct? Correct. correct. Uh, well, I think that sounds like a, a great it, time. It's it's going to be a lot of fun, you know. I mean, if you're typically you're coming down to a basement and see the readings, now you get to do it a little bit outdoors. I'm just concerned about the rain. That's all I'm concerned about right now. I know, raining well. like crazy. I'm just like, we're going to do something outdoors of the year to choose to do something outdoors with all the rain. So we'll hopefully see. the weather will uh, behave itself. Lauren yes. Garza says it's going to be so great. She's so excited. She is excited. She is. She just graduated from Texas Wesleyan, and she might. She might be starting here working for the summer. So very oh, excited. Yeah, we're very excited to have Lauren come and work with us. She's brilliant and it's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, Kathy says that she's already reserved her space. So I love that you guys are uh doing some collaboration with Texas Wesleyan uh, mm -hmm. to get it produced. Um I know this used to now years ago, maybe when it first started, I'm not sure when Circle took over, uh, but Life Theater League used to be the sponsor and they started this program. Uh, when did Circle take it over and what prompted you guys to take it over? Yeah, no, it's actually started with Rose. It started in uh, 96. Larry Boston was a, uh, a teacher. He had gotten a grant from the Star Telegram and he worked with Rose. He wanted to give an opportunity for students to do a, a reading with professional actors. And so they, right. they lined it up and started doing it. And that was the first thing they did. It was 96. And then I think around 98, the Live Theater League took it. Rose took it to the Live Theater League to do it. And that's when the Life Theater League did it for about four or five years. And right. then Fort Worth Theater and Circle Theater combined to start doing it at Circle. And so for about five or six years after that, Circle and Fort Worth were combining to do it. And then uh, then Circle's been doing it ever since. Nice, nice. Um, well, I, like I said, I think it's a great program. I've been several times because some of my kids had work there and, and partly because I liked seeing what the high school kids could write. Yes. Uh, and sometimes I like going just because my, when we would do playwriting uh, uh, things in class, uh, some, of my, some of my kids were brilliant and some were really, really horrible. And so I used to go to get inspired and be like, all right, now high school kids really can write. Yes. Let me go watch that. And so, so I can go back and tell my kids, oh, look, I've seen this done correctly. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. The, I, I, I wouldn't really talk about it if it was bad. I would, I'd be like, well, we're doing right. something. You know, it's, it's one of those things where I'm like, you would feel, you'd be like, well, we've got some great kids and we've got some stuff to it. You know, it's like in this situation. I, I think if you come, you'll enjoy this. This is this is a, a fun reading and, and the scripts are really talented. And it's and it's also feels kind of weird to say that where it's like the scripts are really good. No, really. No, really. They're yeah, yeah, really no. good. You know, so. well, that's fun. I, I love that you guys do it. I think anything that's uh, cooperative with students and encouraging them. Uh, is beneficial and wonderful. So uh, I love that. And I love, uh, you know, theaters collaborating with each other and doing things together. So I think that's really it's nice that that's happening too. So. It's, just, it's a win. It's a win for everybody. Oh, BJ Cleveland is saying he got to read some of them and it's He's, good work. Yep. He was one of our readers for this year. So he would oh, know. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And I'll say, uh, put, me, put me on your list for next year. I would I'd love to be one of your readers. I, I'll help out mm -hmm. if, that, if that would be mm -hmm. helpful to y'all i would love to do that absolutely so um well any other exciting oh let's see uh, there's mm -hmm. one photo i haven't shown that i probably should show uh in fairness because uh, we showed your kiddo oh, that's the, the lovely katie. wife yeah that's my wife katie so yeah um, she looks good at that that she looks good at that picture she does she does she looks good. now you guys traveled i guess uh so, so when I was at Circle in 99 and 2000, you were there. Um, yeah. And I think that you, I'm not sure when you were, I know you were doing box office then. I yeah. Think you that was, that, 
That was the fir- you were, that was the first show I ever worked at Circle Theater was hysterical what? blindness. I mean, it was it was crazy for me because it was like I I I came home for the summer. It was the second like uh, I was in col- I was in college, and I I took the phone book out and I called every theater in town and said I was looking for a, a job. And so I came to interview. They, Circle was looking for a box office person, and I came to interview. And I had a wonderful interview with Rose, and I didn't get the job. Oh no. I did not get the job, and I and then uh, they were looking for someone full time ish, and I was gonna like I gotta go back to school, and uh, but I start had a nice conversation with Rose, and she said that you know if you want to help out, sometime we're gonna do this auditions, and I could said I'll volunteer, come in, so I came in and I volunteered for the auditions, and that's a big you know for her it was one of those things of like, okay, well at least you know once people start volunteering, and I did auditions, and I helped out for something else, and the person they had hired for the box office, I think I don't remember exactly the whole situation, but they had to leave. And so they had a hole for the show for that summer show. And they were like, well, let's see if Tim just wants to, you know, we'll just have Tim work. And I, and then I worked that show, uh, hysterical blight. And, and I could not for the life of me say the title. It, it, it was the title is hysterical. Oh, yeah. Bl- yeah. Hysterical blindness and other Southern tragedies that have plagued my life thus far. And I yeah. had, to, I had to say that on the telephone. I mean, you know, this is, this is the days before the internet. Right. So like you didn't like you didn't go like circle theater what's they're playing you had to like either look through the newspaper or call so a lot of people would call and be like well, what show you got running and you're like hysterical blindness and other southern tragedies that have plagued my life thus far and then they would say well of course the follow up question would be what is that about and I'd say it's an autobiograph autobiograph auto, autobiographical and so I had right. to like yeah I know some of those first phone calls that people were like well I don't know if I'm gonna go to that theater. yeah yeah bet. Although I would say, I mean, what an amazing uh, thing to happen that that's your first show to be oh. running box office for. Yeah, and really. that first weekend we were sold out yeah, every yeah. performance with tons of people trying to get in. Yeah, yeah, it ruined me. It ruined me because you know yeah. that, that show with Leslie Jordan, and now Leslie Jordan is this big star, and I'm like, yeah, of course, everybody knew that one was around him. I mean, like, right. like any time with Leslie Jordan, you automatically knew that he was the this huge star. Yeah, every show that sh- that production got sold out. I went back to college. And I saw, you know, I went back to college and I had a great relationship with Rose and Bill. I was like, okay, you know, maybe I'll come back this next summer. And then the next summer they were like, well, it was such a big hit. Let's bring it back. So they brought the blindness back. And it was a big, you know, it was sold out every night. Everybody came inside. It was like, well, this is how it, I just assumed this is how it is. <laughs> All and, out. Yeah, I thought, well, this, this is great. This is a terrific place to be. And then so, I, and then we did a show after that. We did the Dead Presidents Club and it was sold out every night. It was like, great. And so then I graduated and I was like, I'll come, let me start full time. And, and so I came back. Uh, and I don't want to talk about the first show that we did. It was my first show. But I was full time box office, but it was a fantastic show. It was great. So I, I should talk about it. It was a fa- great show, but it didn't sell it every night. And I was like, well, is everything, is there, <laughs> you have that moment like, is everything okay? Yeah. And then we did this, the next show and it didn't sell it every night. And I was like, all right, is everything okay? And then we did Dead Presidents again and it was sold out every night again. And then we did I Love Your Perfect, now changed and it was sold out. So like the first three years, I was like, well, we just sell it every show. It's like, we don't have to sell anything. It takes care of itself. People just come see the shows. Yeah, we, don't, we don't even have to market or anything. We don't do any marketing. It's it's fair to this. And then over time, it's like, oh, that's, that just doesn't happen. That was a, that was, that was, that was magic. And, you know, and then now you're in that, you know, where I feel like I'm in the business of like, I'm always trying to recapture that magic. Yes, yeah. And that, that, you know, to figure out the whatever formula it is to make that show where everyone wants to come see. And there's just nothing that you, there's no like metric that you can be like, well, that'll work. Because as right, soon as you yeah. think that's the idea that works, you're like, well, we'll just do that show. And then no one comes and you're like, well, what happened? Yeah, right. Yes. Well, I would I would love for us to do hysterical blindness again, uh, but I'm pretty sure that none of us can probably afford Leslie anymore. So, uh, who knows? He might he he might just do it because of the love of his heart. Because he, he loved area, and he, yeah, he had a blast here. He was a, he's a lot of fun. He was so much fun. Um, I know there are several times, especially the second year, uh, he was going back and forth a little bit more. I want to say the first summer he stayed in town more, and I think the second summer. He kept going back to LA for things and would fly back in and out. Yeah. yeah. Um, and which was great for me personally, because he also stayed in Arlington. And so I picked him up from the airport several times um, and he wasn't driving. And I also used to pick him up and take him to the shows. Uh, not, I really can't remember how he got home a lot of times because he, he, I didn't always drive him home, but I picked him up and went with him most of the time. So we usually had, you know, 20 or 30 minutes in the car 
where he just regaled me with <laughs> hilarious stories because he's the best storyteller. And he would, you know, tell me funny stories about all, every every single person in Hollywood, you know, because he worked with everyone on a TV show at one point or another. Um, and it was it was delightful. And then same thing he would tell us, you know, during intermission and during, you know, he was he was constantly telling the whole cast uh, amusing stories. So oh, yeah. I love people. Yeah. So my first experience at Circle is like, well, this is what's this is how it's always gonna be like this. It's gonna yeah. be like this all the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We have, we, there, you know, there are there there are definitely a lot of different experiences that have matched up to it, but but that was that was a magical show, and he's a magical person. You just you, yeah. it's in, yeah, it's the reason why everybody talks about him. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I know it's funny people have been discovering him this year uh, because of all of his Twitter stuff during the pandemic and all of his hey hunker downer stuff, and he's gotten you know even bigger than he was. Um, and it's so funny, people are like, oh my gosh, have you seen this thing by Leslie Jordan? Do you know who that is? If you, I'm like, I do know who that is. I knew that, I knew that person. Yeah, it was really funny when uh, when I moved to New York. One of the first, uh, one of the we were walking down. I don't remember what street it was. We were walking down. Uh, I think it was by uh, Christopher Street. We were coming off of it was off the one train. We were going to Christopher. It was on Christopher Street, and there's this big poster, and it was Leslie Jordan. He was oh, wow. doing his like one man show, I can't, something down the aisle or something like that. And I was like, it was just one of those moments of like, I think it was down the aisle. I don't remember which it was one of his one man shows uh, uh, beyond hysterical blindness. And I just remember laughing going like, well, <laughs> that was that kind of moment I was talking earlier about New York, not feeling in that sense of uh, oh, right. like, 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 yeah. a bit, like it was just like an extension of home. It didn't feel like, oh, I really haven't stepped out. It's like, this is, we've, we've, I know that guy. Right. I know him. I was a little sad uh, when you know, his subsequent shows, uh, you know, his, the historical blindness had the three men and three women chorus to kind of help him tell all the stories and do everything, uh, which I loved. It's always really fun. And then he started doing everything as a one man show and kind of still telling some of those same stories, I think, but just by himself. And I was like, hey, take, take us on the road. We'll, <laughs> we'll all quit our jobs and go with you. You don't need to cut us out. But oh, well, that's the way it goes. <laughs> Yes. Uh, well, any any other great things that you need to let us know about Circle yeah. before we go? Well, you know, on in July we're doing something a little bit different. It's the first time for us. We're doing something. We want to open the doors, and we don't uh, particularly because we don't want to try to produce a play at this point. But I feel like it's time for Circle to open doors. So we're going to do a thing called Underground Art Fest, and on on July the twenty fourth, we're going to open the doors. Uh, if you uh, for a lot of theatrical artists haven't had an opportunity to uh, sort of make money, sell their, sell their artware, sell the, uh, you know, so if you, uh, for theatrical artists in particular, they're just having a lot of opportunity to do that. And so on July 24th, we're going to have a little art fest. We'll have some food, we'll, but we'll have a lot of different, a lot of fun, some music and all kind of things. We're just opening the doors just to kind of get people that used to coming downtown, seeing what it's like and just saying, Hey, we're here. We're still doing stuff. You know, don't forget us. I know it's easy to forget us because we're in the basement, but uh, we're still here. We're, we're going to hang out for a little bit. Well, great. That sounds like a lot of fun. I like I said, love Circle Theater, love that basement space. I think it's fantastic. Um, love your location on Sundance Square. And uh, I think that, you know, Sundance Square is super lucky to have you and Jubilee Theater there, uh, you know, to bring people in. And so hopefully, hopefully they know that too. Um, and uh, I'm glad you guys have been there for 40 years. Happy 40th and Thank you. Uh, looking forward to 40 more. Indeed. Yes. Yeah, so thank you so much for coming and chatting with us. Uh, everyone go to Circle Theater's website, uh, circletheater.org. Circletheater.com. Dot com. Even easier. Circletheater.com. Uh, go get all the updates and find out all the information. Thank you, Tim. We'll see you later. Thank you, Steve. Take care. Talk to you soon. Goodbye. So thank you guys for being here. Always a pleasure to get to chat with you. Uh, Becky saw Becky Rebecca, Rebecca Ricky. Uh, saw historical blindness twice, she says, and that was before we even knew each other, Becky. So um, it, we were destined to become friends, though. So. Uh, go to Circle Theater and make sure you uh, see the high school playwriting uh, readings, because I think you will enjoy those as well. Uh, go to both our websites, find out all the things that are happening with our theaters, and hopefully we will see you soon at the theater. Until then, take care. Bye-bye, everybody.